So my research is focused on uh, reasoning and decision making. So uh, more specifically, what uh, I'm interested in is the differences between people in terms of intuitive versus, uh, let's say, reflective thinking styles. So this is something that you probably recognize if you just think about your friends you know or whatever. Some people are just more rational and some people tend to be a little bit more intuitive or emotional. What my research focuses on is the kind of consequence of those things apart from just um, you know the kind of more obvious things like rational people tend to make better decisions or whatever. So uh, perhaps an easier way to describe those differences would be using an example. Uh, so here's a problem that people use in my field to assess uh, individual differences in reflective versus intuitive thinking styles. One example is famous from the 70s, it's called the Linda problem. So uh, imagine this is, a, this is a personality characteristic of a person, okay? Someone named Linda, uh, she is very uh, interested in uh, equal rights. She's often at political protests on the weekends. Um, she eats lots of granola, so on and so forth. Uh, and the task is to determine what's more likely of these three kind of options. So you have to rank them, okay? So the first is that Linda is a feminist. The second is that Linda's a bank teller. And the third is that Linda's a feminist and a bank teller, okay? So when you ask people to rank them, obviously the first thing is that it sounds like Linda's a feminist, right? So that just comes to mind. That's an intuitive response. Uh, you don't have to think about the characteristics and anything like that. It comes to mind. It just seems like Linda's a feminist. Uh, and then the trick for the problem, the reason it's interesting for reasoning researchers is the second two options. So the uh, second option was that Linda's a bank teller, and the third one is that Linda's a feminist and a bank teller. People will rank the third option before the second one. So they, they'll say that it's more likely that Linda's a feminist and a bank teller than uh, it's just that Linda's a bank teller, which uh, logically can't be the case because that's a conjunction. So it includes, if Linda's a bank teller and a feminist, Linda's a bank teller, that's one probability. Linda's a feminist, another one, so it can only be smaller than the other probability. So it's more likely that Linda's a bank teller than a feminist and a fake teller. So first most likely thing is that Linda's a feminist. Second is that Linda's a bank teller. Third is that she's a bank teller and a feminist. Uh, but the reason that people uh, think that the conjunction is more probable than just the one by itself is that it sounds like Linda's a feminist. So you don't answer that based on probability. You answer based on what she sounds more like. So that's an intuitive response. To figure out the conjunction, the probabilities of the uh, bank teller and the feminist together uh, requires an additional kind of analytic process uh, and because there's an intuitive response that comes to mind, it kind of preempts that analytic process from occurring. So the, the research that I do focuses on uh, the cases where people are actually more willing to think in that analytic way as opposed to just the intuitive way. So this is something that uh, is, you'll, you'll experience, I mean, based on your day-to-day -day experiences. Uh, you know some people are just more kind of rational than others. Some people are more like Spock, and some people are more like, I don't know, Stephen Colbert. Uh, some people are more intuitive and they go with their gut feelings and some people are more analytical. Uh, and it's based all, there's actually formalized in a cognitive model called dual process theories. Um, and what they posit essentially is that there's intuitive responses that are outside of our control and they come up with things like if I ask your name, you don't have to think about it, that's an intuitive response. And then analytic processes can be used to solve difficult math problems or whatever. Uh, but the key to the analytic processes is that they can actually be used to override or undermine the intuitive responses. So we can actually question our intuitive beliefs about things, uh, and my research focuses on the consequences of, of those types of differences. So someone who is more analytical, someone who is more willing to kind of question their tuition on a problem like the Linda problem, and there's lots of other types of problems like that, uh, those people are actually less religious, for example. And they, for example, they have uh, less likely to have paranormal beliefs, they don't believe in astrology as often and stuff like that and they have differences, there's differences in uh, things like traditional moral values. So the interesting thing about the research is that uh, it's not just the case that people that are more analytical are better at making decisions and pro solving problems, but actually those differences have uh, consequences for a large array of things, uh, including just entire worldviews. Uh, so that's why I think it's important.